Talking Tutorials Part 4 of how to make a social networking site with PHP. Uh, this is going to be an extremely long tutorial. I'm thinking about maybe an hour long and I might split it up into parts but here is what we are going to be doing. I thought you might want to see exactly what you're doing before you start diving into this hour long tutorial. Anyways, here's our home screen. Click create an account and we are prompted with this uh, neat little interface here. Let me adjust this uh, screen here and it just keeps on okay there we go so we have just a basic create an account area here with a first name last name username we have a cool little checking mechanism here uh, the user inputs their email and then their passwords so just just for an example here I'll put my first name there hit create an account and we have a nice little error checker so we can see if uh, the, the you know the passwords have not been entered so we can see the indications here uh, first name is uh, appropriate there's it's uh, not empty and the passwords uh, have to be between six and hundred characters long and the password must contain at least two numbers and those have not been satisfied and the username uh, space has already been taken and uh, they also do not have any characters within them. So let's enter a little bit more information here. I'm going to put G Dayton, and the reason I'm going to be doing this is because this has already been taken. So when I hit check, it's going to say unavailable because there's already a Glenn Dayton or a G Dayton registered. But if I just add like a character like two and hit check, then it shows that it, it, it is available. And this is a cool little jQuery thing. So if you hit check, we have that little loading graphic there. So that, that's just uh, to indicate to the user that it's uh, loading currently. And then the email position here, we check to see if, if the email is a uh, valid email. So I'll just put in like GWRE whatever and hit create account. And you can see that the email has not been uh, verified. It's a false email. And as soon as we add like at gmail.com, email then becomes true. However, I, it's a little bit more advanced. Um, in emails you can add, like I could have my email super tricked out with all these little uppercase and lowercase things. And if you're just uh, checking emails, just uppercase, lowercase, upper, upper, I mean uppercase, lowercase, whatever, and you have another email that has maybe a lowercase g, both those emails will not be it will register them as uh, separate types of emails even though if you send an email to this it will send it to the exact same email it's kind of hard to understand but when I hit create an account the script automatically uh, takes those uppercase and puts them into lowercase so users cannot create redundant accounts with the same exact email but just in a different format and uh, likewise you can have pluses in your emails or uh, dots or, or periods in your email and your email will still send to that uh, URL so if I hit create an account it will parse those dots and uh, plus symbols out of your email so that a user cannot use your email more than one time okay so and then we have our password qualification area here and it just says we have one error because we have not entered our passwords here so I'm just going to enter a password like one two three one two three hit create an account and it is a false password um, because for some reason it's not registering up here and we can work that out in the actual tutorial but if I hit okay so so it works there so I have to, I have to check something with the email here but as you can see I just entered one two three one two three and the passwords here and 123 does not satisfy between 6 and 100 characters long and does and it and it only contains numbers so if i add like uh, a b a b 123 that's still five characters a b 123 hit create an account uh the passwords i guess are true here that's another problem i need to work out yeah, this is also called uh, checking your application, and this is obviously something I'm having problems with. So I hit ABC123, <coughs> ABC123, 
hit create an account. It, I guess the indication does not does not update, so that, that'll be something we'll fix when I actually show you the tutorial. Uh, maybe if I take some of this stuff out here, maybe if I put like ER it. I'm trying to show you the rest of this email or this password indication thing. Uh, we'll just pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that that'll satisfy the length. Copy and paste that, and it shows here that the passwords do not match. I have no idea why that says that, and the username has already been taken. And the username has already been taken because it is a, a space. Anyway, so obviously when I start the tutorial, I'm gonna have to fix the uh, password things. Uh, another thing that I have changed that we're going to be working on in the tutorial is the PHP my admin. And PHP my admin has a users table here. And when you start the tutorial, or in the next like two minutes after I'm done with this opening here, uh, you're gonna I, I'm going to advise you to just create a uh, dummy account here with a dummy username and a, a uh, email and some other dummy data here and, and you'll notice that your IP will always stay 127.0.0.1 because it is using WAMP server which is a local host so you, you can't get around having a unique IP unless you put it up on the web and you're doing this through a web application and another thing to note is uh, the last tutorial that I did the user password, the length of the user password is not 32 characters because that's for MD5. I have since changed the password encryption to uh, SHA-512 which is 128 characters long and is very secure uh, so that's something we're gonna have to change. Okay so now we're gonna make the create an account sub function for the website and I actually recorded a 1 hour and 20 minute video before this and the Camtasia video recorder deleted it because it was too much space so unfortunately I had to condense it and I have to restart and this is my restart video so I think I'm just gonna actually instead of code it out in front of you I think I'm just gonna go over it so you wanna go to your index.php page and import the jQuery script I'm using Google's jQuery script uh, I'm going to have all this code up online so you don't have to sit here and pause the video and type it out. Just go to tagatutorials.com and I'll include a link in the description also. So we're going to have to import the script here and that's going to be in the head. And next we're going to be, for, for, all the, for the index.php page, all the scripts are going to be embedded in the index.php page. If you remember down here for this request, uh, when, when the C equals whatever it will take you to that page like it's hard to uh, say it but here it is so if it says question mark c equals sign up then it's going to reg then it's going to embed the sign up script inside the page and this is a sign up script right here so for this to occur sign up is database dependent so for the index.php we need to link it up to a database and this php include statement dbconnect.inc is linking this page up to the database so let's go to the, let's uh, go to the dbconnect.inc. You're going to have to come over here to site and then right click and then create file, uh, new file, and you want to name it dbconnect.inc. So here's my dbconnect.inc, and for dbconnect, I am using a PDO object, and the reason I'm using a PDO object instead of MySQL connect and MySQL connect uh, or uh, select database is because the PDO object allows you to um, do some uh, handling with your data as far as filtering it out so that you don't have any SQL injections. So I think the PDO object is a very uh, good thing to implement. And it's also just one line of code instead of three or four lines of code to use the MySQL connect. So it's just going to be MySQL colon host localhost database na or DB name social web user and then your password and note that PDO can also handle uh, my, uh, MySQL Lite and it can also handle Postgre and stuff like that and that's all denoted right here. So once you include that in your index.php page uh, you're going to come down to right here header write.inc and we're going to open up header write.inc 
and you discover that you have a create an account um, division here which is supported by a tag you want to go to your href here and put uh, question mark c equals sign up so you get that link because you want to make sure when you hit create an account it takes you to the create an account page so that that works so once you have that all figured out then you're going to have to actually create your sign in dot inc or sign up dot inc file so right click site new file and then name it sign in or sign up dot inc and once you do that this is actually a 331 line uh, coded file here so it's quite a large file so I'd recommend just going on my website and copying and pasting the code and also listening in so let me go down to the actual HTML before we get into all this other code here so here's the HTML here that you can recognize so we have create an account create an account and then we have the paragraph tags for sign up for the world's biggest social network stuff like that which is all right here all recognizable and then for this uh, PHP area here this is for error handling as you can see sequentially if I hit create an account down here I need to adjust this page if I hit create an account you're going to sequentially see that if I hit uh, create an account that you're going to see that there's a little error box here and if we go back to here sequentially after sign up for the world's next biggest social network or whatever you'll see that this script appears and when you see you have five errors the five errors is this script right here running okay so that's just kind of like a sequential thing um, and back to the HTML here here's the form method uh, we're going to do post and then we're going to have the action as nothing because we're going to refer back to the same page and we're going to create a table with some uh, table rows, a TD. We're going to align the, the first name right, right here. Make sure it all lines up. And we're going to do, I'm going to get into this a little bit later, some of this uh, handling here. So that's just basically the HTML of the page. Here's some jQuery um, and then some uh, more handling. By the way, the images on my page are gotten from a different, they're uh, actually links to a different website. They're not locally on my application on my computer so that's maybe something that you want to do is maybe download the images they render a little bit faster and they're more reliable that way okay so now that we have that all that all uh, squared away all the HTML let's go up here to the functions um, I have four functions up here uh, the first one I'm probably going to get into is check username and what check username does is it makes sure it uh, ensures that the same username isn't used twice in your database because we don't want somebody to use dog and then there's another person to use dog or else you're not sure which dog you're referring to so what check username does is it takes care of this so let's just go over the code here so we're going to include uh, database connect db connect so that allows you to use the pdo object now this this uh, prepare statement here so we're going to pass the pdo object and we're going to use pr uh, pdo's prepare method and we're going to pass some uh, SQL as the uh, parameter here and notice uh, select count all from users where user username equals and then we're gonna have this little semicolon username or actually that's a colon username and this right here is a placeholder for when this execute uh, actually executes so now that we have this prepared we're gonna pass this select uh, variable down here and we're gonna use the execute method and we're going to pass an array with this right here corresponding to this right here. And what execute will do and what prepare will do, it will make sure that it gets rid of any attempt to do any SQL injection. And the whole reason behind this is because of SQL injection. So if, if we had more than one username, we would just make another entry for this array and name it like a email or something. And we'll, you'll see that later. And we want to fetch. Uh, information from here so we're going to do select fetch all and what fetch all will do is it will return an array that has a uh, an integer like a sub value here and it will also return an array that has a actual string value so if we wanted to we could actually pass count uh, parentheses uh, star asterisk parentheses and we could reference the same exact value so it allows two different options so we're going to see if one, if more than one of 
these username exists. And if it does, then that means the username is taken and it returns false. And if it is not, then it will turn true and it means that the username is available. And then we're going to set PDO object to null, meaning we're going to close the connection and we're going to make sure that PDO is not referenced anymore. So that's the uh, check username function. Uh, let's do sanitize email. Uh, so sanitize email, you pass in a string, which is supposed to be the email, and we're going to split the string by its uh, at symbol. So if I have a string, I mean if I have an email like uh, green at gmail.com, it's going to explode green into a sub, it's going to be email sub zero, so this right here is actually green, and then email sub one is going to be gmail.com. So what we're doing right here for email two, if this were if this were capitalized, if like E were capitalized or N were N were capitalized, what it would do is it would take email two and it would lowercase green. It would make it the E and the N lowercase for there. Now we're going to split um, this entire we're going to split green into uh, G R E E N and we're just going to leave this uh, back piece here. And note, when we do explode it, we it gets rid of that uh, at symbol. So that, so this is basically what it's going to look like, except it's going to be lowercase, and the end's going to be lowercase. So string split's going to split up every single uh, character inside the string into its own character, into its own array. So we could reference G by z sub 0, sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, sub 4. So we're going to uh, initialize return. This is going to be the string that's returned. We're going to initialize that to nothing or to an uh, empty string. And then we're going to go through email splits. So that means we're going to go through G-R-E-E-N as S. So we're going to just withdraw S. And then we're going to check if S is a valid character in an email. And if it, if it is, we're going to append it to the return. So if I, uh, this right here is a valid email because there's no invalid characters in it. So all G, R, E, and N would uh, be appended to return, and it would return the email um, exactly as if it were a correct email, and it is a correct email. Notice we do have a method here, invalid, and that, that is a, our own special method here. Here it is, invalid. And what invalid is passed is a string, and the string is going to be one character at a time, so it will pass G as one character. And we're going to initialize an items array as the items that we don't want our email to, or that we want to withdraw out of our email. So we want to we want to take out a plus symbol and a dot out of our email or something else. And I will get into that a little bit later why we want to do that. So we're going to go through for each items as G. So we're going to check and see if the current character that's passed is equal to either plus or, or period or any. We can put as many as we want there. And if it is equal to that, then we're going to return true, meaning we want to get rid of it. And if we want to get rid of it, then it's not going to append it to, re to the return uh, variable here. Now, the reason why we want to take out the plus in the period is, believe it or not, when emails are sent, uh, periods and pluses are ignored. So my personal email when I signed up to Gmail is glenn.dayton24. Now this dot can be taken out and it will send it still to glenndayton24 at gmail.com. Uh, there's an at symbol here. And the, the problem with um, <clears throat> having periods is when I do an if statement if I see if this string is equal to that string and I have a period in there, then it will, re it will render the two strings as being different just because of that period. Even though when that when that uh, email is sent, it will still send it to the same exact email. Meaning multiple of these emails can be registered with different accounts. And also, if I had like a, a capital N or like a plus in here, this could still very easily, it will, it will still send it to my email account, even though I have all these extra characters in here. So if we take all these characters out and we make the email <clears throat> its bare minimum, then we will store it uh, in a way that it can't be duplicated. So that is sanitize email, check username, and, uh, sanit and sanitize emails dependent, dependent invalid function.
the next one is check email. It's very much like a uh, check username. As a matter of fact, it's it's exactly the same except for the variables here. So just uh, uh, modify the variables there. The next uh, thing in our application here is checking the items that are submitted into our form. Um, so for last name, let's go to the actual application. So for first name we have, uh, we want to make sure that when the user clicks that create an account button that they're not submitting nothing. So as you can see when I hit create an account, it will show that it's invalid there. If I enter like E, it will show that there's something there. And I want to make sure that everything is there before the email is sent. So we need to check and see if everything is there before the email is sent. So the way that we can do that, so if we scroll all the way back up here just below the functions, we have this if statement here, and this is one of the main if statements of our application. And this if statement here checks and sees if the submit button has been clicked. Now if I come back here and I reload the page, notice that you don't see any of those images or those checkboxes or the, the error console up there. Everything's exactly the same, it's just nothing. Now the reason uh, being is because if statement is set uh, with a with the parameter of post submit is not is not qualified, meaning it, it doesn't satisfy this condition. Likewise, these conditions right here aren't satisfied. So that means that it will jump down to this echo statement and output this information right here. Likewise, right here, if is set f name, this will not be uh, executed either because f name e is dependent on the page being submitted so as you can see there's a pattern here of things uh, being uh, rendered differently and this is kind of a design standard for being able to use the same script multiple times so I'm using a dot inc for two different two different responses the initial response for the page and then the secondary response as outputting the information <coughs> Meaning I could very easily just make a sign up page here that would be able to submit the information and then a sign up confirm. I could make like sign up confirm and then that script would take care of submitting the information and showing errors. But I'm combining both of those functions in one exact in one script. So it gets a little bit more complicated because we have to design our script so that we have two different uh, ways of showing it. And that's that's kind of why we have these if statements and then these alt alternating uh, echoes and, and stuff like that. <clears throat> so if we come back up here, we are going to uh, look at this, and I'm have to cut this video off and start my next one. Uh, user data array. So we're going to create an array that holds all the posted information. Note that posted information is always there's a there's always a design standard of post is a money sign underscore um, capital P O S T, and then that's going to be an array with uh, f name, l name, username, email, password, etc. And f name, l name, and password, and etc. correspond to the names right here. So if I change username to dog, then I have to come up here where it says username and change this to dog for the post to be able to correctly gather that information. So right here this is basically our information gathering receptacle if you could view it that way. And then I set all of these uh, post, post, all this posted information to an array and I set it to sub 0, sub 1, etc. And I find this easier because if I want to loop through all this information and do and make it all under case, then I can just use user data and make it uh, and make just a loop go through it all. Plus there's a, you don't have to uh, name all these different pieces of information different names. You can just use user data sub x. You know, it, it's just real, real simple. And we're gonna set uh, password message to nothing. And you're going to see what that does later. And we're going to have uh, all these Boolean values set to true. And you'll see that that's function for the multi-state script. And I'm going to have to cut this off right now and start my next one. So the next piece of our application is validation of the data that is submitted into the forms here, such as first name, last name, username, etc. And the way that we validate this information is by checking it with... Uh, kind of an if statement derivative. Uh, instead of using an if statement, I'm setting 
have f name e to true or false dependent upon if it meets the criteria. And in this case, this criteria checks and sees if the string length of user data sub zero, which corresponds to f name, if it's greater than zero, and if the string length of user data sub zero corresponding to f name is less than or equal to 75. So it matches uh, f name between that and sees if it if it meets that criteria. If for some uh, reason f name is false, then it increments the error counter plus plus. The same thing is done for l name, and the same error counter is done for l name. Uh, finally, if f name and l name are true, meaning if they both contain values that are greater than zero and less than 75, then we're going to set user data sub six, which is nothing, to the uh, user data sub zero pipeline. Uh, we're going to be uh, concatenating a pipeline char character to user data sub one, and that's going to put the first and last name with a pipe character right down the center. Next, we want to validate our email. We have the validation for the length of the email, making sure that there is something submitted, and then we have uh, this check right here validates whether it is truly an email or not. So filter var user data sub three filter validate email. This is a final constant that is a regular expression that has already been pre-generated testing if this is a email. So if it returns a, a valued like a true email, then the email is just returned exactly like, like it was when it was input. So we want to test and see the string length. If it's greater than zero, then that means it's valid. However, if the email is not valid, it's not going to output anything, and the string length will then be zero, setting email to false. So if email is true, we want to set user data to sub3. We want to sanitize the email. And uh, we already went over the function sanitize email, but that takes the pluses and the minuses out of the email and makes everything lowercase. Next, we want to check and see if the email has already been taken or not. So we're going to do email e check email uh, user data sub three, and we're going to see if that is equal to true. Now, if email is false, then we're going to set password message, which is a little pop-up on the on the error area, and we're going to set a list item email has already been used, uh, like a notification to the user. And we're also going to increment the error counter if a false email occurs. Next, we're going to take care of the username. Uh, the string length of the username, we're going to check that just like we did before with all the other ones. Uh, if the username is false from the checking of the uh, string length, then we're going to skip down to here. But however, if it's true, then we're going to check the username and see if it already exists or not. And if it does exist, then it's going to be equal to false, and username E is going to be false. And then we're going to jump down here to username E, and if it is, false, the error counter will increment and a notification will be set. Next we're going to take care of the passwords. And the passwords, we have to make sure the length of the password is satisfied. If it is not, this else statement executes. Next we want to see if the password, the regular password and the confirmation password both match. If they do, then it will move on. If they don't, this else message will occur. Passwords do not match. Next we want to count the amount of numbers in the email. So we can see if the user had put numbers and letters in his or her email. So we're going to uh, count the number of letters. We're going to split the string by each character into an array. And we're going to uh, iterate through that array. And we're going to check and see if the current character is a number or not. And if it is, we're going to increment numbers plus plus. Next, we see if there are greater than or equal to two numbers in the password. So we check and see if there's two or more numbers in the password. If there isn't, then we set a notification and we set password E to false. However, if there are two numbers or more in the password, then we check and see if the password consists of entirely numbers. And if the password consists of entirely numbers, then we execute this message, password must contain both numbers and letters. And the way we know if the password contains entirely numbers is we count the amount of elements in the splitted string minus the numbers. And if that returns zero, then that means it's all that means it's all numbers. However, if it returns one, that means there's at least one uh, character in there that's not a number. 
uh, once everything is true and everything is good, then we're going to set user data sub4 to the hash. We're going to uh, do a SHA-512 hash, and we're going to pass user data sub4, which is the first password, and this will hash the password out, and this is what will be stored in the database. Next, we're going to uh, take care of actually submitting the information into the database. Actually, right here, password E. So if password's false, then we're going to increment error counter plus plus. And password conf E, this is the secondary. Password conf E is this one right here. And if, if this password's wrong, then we're going to make this one wrong also. So we don't have to do double checking. OK, back down to here. Uh, if the error counter is less than or equal to zero, if the less than is not needed, it could just be equals equals to zero, but if there's a bug in the code, then it'll still work. And if the page has been submitted, is set post submit, then we're going to prepare the information. So we're going to set an insert statement, we're going to use uh, the PDO object that we have passed when we imported uh, DB Connect. We're going to use the PDO object, and we're going to use this uh, uh, method prepare. So we're going to insert the following uh, code, insert into users, username, user full name, user email, user password, user priv, short for privileges, privileges, and user IP. We're going to insert the values of user, username, and uh, etc. Notice there's a little uh, colon right there, which is a placeholder for the information that we're going to insert when we execute this next command. So we're going to take this insert statement that we created, and then we're going to use its following method execute and to execute we're going to pass an array that has the following placeholders corresponding to their correct values and we're going to set their correct values to strings to lower such as user data 2 user full name user data uh, sub 6 uh, and values just like that sorry my graphics card just tempor temporarily stopped <laughs> Okay, so next one, uh, user privileges. We're going to set that to one. One's going to be our default value, and then we're going to get uh, withdraw the IP from the user's computer, and then we're going to insert that all into our database. And once we do this execute command, it will automatically insert that all in there. And then we're going to check and see if this was successful, and it executes going to return a boolean value, so we can check that in the if statement. If it is successful, then we're going to throw up a confirmation message uh, with the, the following text: user data sub three is the email. And if it isn't successful, then we're going to display an error. And this error means it's a fatal error because unless it didn't catch the user's problem beforehand, something with our system must, must have been wrong. So it's going to uh, throw up this error here, fatal error, you know, sub, uh, contact support. And then we're back down to uh, the HTML that we had before. So let's go back up here. So we have everything up there. I don't think I've done the CSS yet, I mean the uh, jQuery. So I'll do the jQuery right now. So if you can uh, find your TD align right username, it's right above that. And we're going to insert the following script. So before I go into this jQuery here, let me go down to the actual area that the jQuery exists. So if you notice, there's this little button here that says check. The, here's the button check right here. So class check on click is going to be our command. So when it is clicked, uh, we're going to invoke the G method from JavaScript. And we're going to pass the forms. This, this current page is forms and then the username name, which is the text box right here. So we're going to pass the username, and once once G is invoked, then we're going to, uh, as you can see here, user value is the value of the of the user. So we're going to withdraw the value that the user has entered. But before we get there, we're going to look at load here. So load, if we come down here, name load, class load, displays the GIF that rotates. It looks like the the loading like the page is loading. That's going to display because we've called the the uh, method. Next we're going to do AVA which is short for available 
and we're going to hide that and available is this right here and notice everything's displayed none because we don't want that to appear when the page is loaded and next we're going to do unavailable which is the same exact thing as available but it is uh, hidden and the reason why we want to hide these is when the page is first loaded uh, those will already be hidden and we click uh, check then the loading gif will appear the the uh, available and unavailable will still will still have not been shown but if the user clicks on that check again then we want those availables and unavailables to uh, disappear and the loading gift to appear and then for them to reappear so that's why we have to hide them there next we do a post statement withdrawing information from check username PHP and check username PHP checks and sees if the username has been taken or not and I don't think I've gone over uh, check username so we can go over it right now so in check username we're going to do a PHP statement include uh, database connect dot inc and then we're going to get the value u from our URL and we're going to use the PDO object and we're going to prepare a command select count all from users where user username equals placeholder username and now we're, we're going to do the same exact thing that we did before. We're going to fetch all of the information. We're going to check and see if the username has already been taken. If it has, we're going to see a 1. So if 1 is greater than 0, then the username has been taken false. If it has not, then it's true. And then we're going to close connection by setting PDO object to null. And this will sufficiently handle whether the user has been taken or not. Let's go back to sign up so if data equals true so if the user has been uh, taken I mean it has, if it has not been taken it's going to be true and available will show if the user has been taken then unavailable will show now this loading function here will hide the loading gif once it's all done loading so if we do dot load function uh, load and then uh, dot hide it will hide that sufficiently notice that for each of these uh, inputs here. We have some PHP to handle this. So if the form has been submitted then we want to show the value uh, of that form so that the user doesn't have to resubmit their username every time they get an error it will automatically appear. So we can, sorry. You can look at this right here. When I click I have three errors. Uh, Glenn is still maintained in here and the reason why that is occurring is because this that's set to the value that that has been submitted in here so that the user doesn't have to resubmit that information and notice that we don't just have this initially there because when the page is first loaded we don't have the value user data sub 2 so we need to check and see if it's already there I mean, if the page has been submitted, then it's going to execute. If it hasn't, then we're just going to show nothing with no value in it. It's just going to be a regular input. And that occurs for every single one of our inputs except for passwords. Uh, next prominent thing is this next PHP statement. If is set email E, so if it's going to check and see if that was set. Meaning if it, the page is initially loaded, email E will not have been set, meaning the little image will not appear on the side. However, if it has been set, then we're going to check and see if email E is true or false. And if it is false, then we're going to echo bad. If, it is, if, if it's true, then we're going to echo good. And good and bad are the corresponding variables that handle uh, our images that will display right here. And they're just it's just HTML for the images that will appear. Okay, so, and uh, last but not least, I would say right here is setting the, the once we do all the close, once we render all the information on the page, and once we submit all the information to our database, then we want to set our PDO object to null so that we close the connection so it doesn't, it's not a resource hungry, hungry script. I think this is it.
Yeah, okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to update the main.css. And I think this is the very last thing in this tutorial is that we have to update it. So we're going to do input good and we're going to set it to, we're going to give it the attribute border. We're going to have a border around, as you can see, around each one of these, it's a black border. We're going to set the black border to one pixel solid uh, with black. And then uh, form error takes care of this little red box around here. So we want to go to the red box attributes of a border. And the reason why we want to do a border is you can see that it doesn't look like there's a border here. But the reason why we want to do a border is because we, we want to use this border radius command so we can get that nice beveled edges. So we're going to have three different commands for this because we have to support you know different types of browsers. So we have the Mozilla, and then we have, uh, I think, Google Chrome and Opera, and then Border Radius for other browsers. Then we have padding, three pixels that pads out the sides, width, 350, margin, bottom, 10, so it separates it from some of the other elements. And then form control is exactly the same as form error, but we have changed the color. And another thing to note in form, uh, confirm, is that we've also changed the image in form confirm and that is right here. We've changed the image so that it's a little green check mark and we've also changed the information that is there. So I think this is the entire, entire tutorial. Uh, if you click on create an account and if you just enter some information here you can do some checking and seeing if everything's uh, good. Once again this will be on my site. Thank you very much. Please subscribe.